Today on Getting Real with the Housewives, Danielle Cabral opens up about her estranged relationship with her brother. You can call my brother up right now and he could tell you something completely different than what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean his truth is any less important than mine. The Jersey girls take on Ireland and we're recapping the whole tumultuous trip. Plus, Laguna Beach OG Jen Bunny was asked to be a housewife. I'm not sure I would want to take the risk of putting myself into a situation that I didn't have control over. We've got that plus so much more on today's Getting Real with the Housewives. Hey guys, Christina Garibaldi here with Us Weekly, executive producer Mandy DeCamp, and welcome to Getting Real with the Housewives. We took a trip to Ireland, um, the Jersey Girls. It, was, it seemed like a fun and uh, drama-filled trip. Yes, I mean, it's they were total fish out of water in Ireland, which I loved seeing, like the Jersey girls in Ireland. Um, but I loved it. I love seeing Ireland. I mean, we want to go back so badly. Seriously. So yeah. beautiful. All right. Before we recap everything, let's see what you guys had to say about last week's show. Chris K said, Rachel is dying for attention. It was totally wrong to use her stepson as a storyline. I kind of agree. I think it was uh, kind of the wrong move on the, on her part. Yeah. I feel like, you know, as a new housewife, she's probably trying to like, figure out what her story is and the producers are trying to figure out what her story is. And it just was a poor choice on everyone's. Yes, end. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joan S said, Teresa did ask Melissa to stand up in her wedding earlier this season. And Melissa said, no, the way she asked, I would have said no too. Yes. I think a few of you noted that we said she didn't ask her to be a bridesmaid. She right. did. It was just not the, pro like not the, I didn't think that was like an official invite, I guess. <laughs> I didn't either. Yeah. No, it was like, you can, you can do it if you want. I'm like, yeah. uh, no, I think, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Uh, yeah. Jenny Boma said, Louis did not use Teresa's father's pajamas that he had worn. The pajamas were a gift to Teresa's father that he never wore. Louis decided instead of giving them away, he would wear them so the girls would feel better. Might sound strange, but I think Louis thought he was doing a good deed. Yes, that's what Jennifer told us, that they weren't right. um, used pajamas. They were brand new, still have the tags on them. Yeah. And I'm sure he meant well, but it definitely sounded strange when he Yeah, the way it was edited together, yes. it was hard not to poke fun at it. Right. Um, but yes, okay, fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cher says, the way Louis flip-flops plays both sides it just looks suspicious yeah it does uh, it does a little bit at times i still I, I still can't figure louis out me neither i think it'll be um a few years before we really know the true louis yeah definitely yeah. all right well let's get into this week's news and kicking it off um kyle, Rich kyle richard's husband mauricio says the couple were forced to address speculation about their marriage on this upcoming season of beverly hills he chatted with former housewives teddy mellencamp and tamra judge for their podcast and he said that he was asked about rumblings of the struggles with uh his relationship with kyle he said we're not getting a divorce i mean it's so dumb there's that one stupid story that came out there and and then the girls all, you know, decided to talk about it on the housewives. And so now it's a storyline. So there's definitely some stories out there and Kyle and I address it and we'll take it from there. It is what it is. So the rumors that surfaced online last year that Mauricio had an affair with uh, Dorit. Of course, uh, this was after former Bravo star Dana Wilkie sparked um, after she shared a fan theory about the alleged inf infidelity writing on Instagram. The fans can't stop talking about this thoughts. Well, Dorit swiftly shut that down and said, is something wrong with you, woman, or are you just so miserable? in your life you have nothing better to do you're definitely one of the thirstiest people i've ever seen i guess it's just as simple as that um you know she said that there was zero truth behind the rumor saying kyle and mo are our friends and my kids call them uncle and auntie do you think this is okay for my kids to see when it's a disgusting lie it's sad pathetic and bound to bite you in the ass um inevitably now mauricio didn't specify on the podcast whether he was referring to the Dorit allegations but he did note that the drama gets addressed by the girls as saying they really brought it up to kyle which is kind of bitchy and super mean because particularly the girls they actually know what's going on and they know exactly what it's all about um he added that for them to bring it on and make it more real bring it up to the show just kind of sucks so we did address it and it is what it is i think you know in order to be on these shows you got to grow some thick skin well yeah they're going to address it you know it, yeah. that's why you're there mauricio you know yeah. how it works um yeah. but yeah i mean it seems like maybe the, you know, some drama between them this season, which we haven't yeah. seen. I don't think we've really seen her marriage struggles ever before. Never. No. I mean, I think I've said it in the past where I feel like Kyle mm -hmm. kind of plays it um, cool or safe. Rather, yeah. she plays it safe in terms of like 
doesn't put too much of her personal life. Like it's always about mm-hmm. her sisters or whatever, but it's not like about her digging deep into her own personal life. So it'll be interesting to see. It will um, be interesting. I have to say though, like as an avid Housewives fan, I do not re- remember Dana. I don't either. No, not at all. Like I she definitely her. I didn't. Like, I didn't have no recollection of this friend. No, I have no no idea. But um, yeah. I guess so. I guess Dorit still follows her. So yeah. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. All right. Well, Caroline Manzo has set the record straight and is never coming back to the Housewives after the Brandy Glanville incident. Um, She declared that she is done with the Housewives franchise after her alleged altercation with Brandy, which she called very traumatic on the, again, the Teddy Mellencamp podcast. Yes, making headlines. Making headlines every week. (laughs) Um, when asked by Teddy whether she'd do another Ultimate Girls trip season with a different cast, she had the same response. And as she did about returning to the show full time. She said, never, no, never, never, never. It was something that I was done with and happy to be done with. I walked away for a reason. I always said for me to go back, it would have to be a number that was financially irresponsible to walk away from. <laughs> good, good plan. Good plan. I mean, she is done. I, I cannot wait to see like what exactly goes down, but it must have been pretty bad for her to just be like, I'm, I mean, I'm sure it was probably a struggle for them to even get her to come on to this season. Yeah. So because she's been away for so long and for this to kind of go down, she's probably done, done, done. I also wonder, I, I imagine they had to pay her the full amount, even even though she left early. So I'm definitely that number was me too. Me I'll too. All right. Reality stars make, we found out this week about Caitlin Bristow. Yes. So interesting to me. <laughs> so, so interesting. Um, well, somebody that may need some more money is Jen Shaw because her legal troubles continue to just pile on as uh, so her lawyer now claims that she owes her, her thousands of dollars in legal fees. Why does this not surprise me? So according to a New York federal court filing obtained by Us Weekly on April 7th, um, her attorney stated that she and her law firm filed a motion to withdraw as counsel on March 24th based on Ms. Shaw's unpaid fees fees and expenses. In total, uh, her attorney alleges that she owes over $124,000, um, $50,000 in unpaid fees and almost $75,000 in unpaid expenses. She, um, in a statement to Us Weekly, her lawyer said, Miss, or her former lawyer said, Miss Shaw is a good woman who crossed the line. She accepts full responsibility for her actions and deeply apologizes to all who have been harmed. Miss Shaw is also sorry for disappointing her husband, children, family, friends, and supporters. Jen pled guilty because she wants to pay her debt to society and put this ordeal behind her and her family. Now, this was uh, that was a statement after um, her guilty plea, but mm-hmm. you still got to pay. <laughs> yeah, no, this, I'm sorry to say it does not surprise me. All right. Well, moving right along, um, another Jen idea that is amazing. Um, she is staging a play with her fellow prison inmates at FPC Bryan in Texas, uh, where she is. And it has the perfect title. Um, so the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City star is developing a production called The Real Housewives of Bryan, according to her manager, uh, Chris. So Chris went on to say that the play is still in its early phases. Um, she's taking some time to help the stars of the play learn how to read and write. <laughs> In true housewives fashion, however, the personalities in the play will be cranked up to 11. In addition to developing her theater production, uh, Shah has been working in the prison's educational department and library. Giovanni added that this client has been working out every day and maintaining her Muslim faith. Doesn't sound that bad, to be honest. Really? I'm actually kind of intrigued. I mean, I probably would watch. I would definitely watch. I'm like, I don't know if I want it to be scripted. I want this. I want to see what real houses are in the prison. Seriously. I mean, get the cameras rolling. Get Andy in the camera. Where are we right now? I mean, <laughs> hey, at least like she's doing something to pass the time yeah. to help the former, to help the inmates. And, you know, maybe, you know, bring a little joy to everybody. That's servants of time in there. I can't yeah. with her. It's It's pretty funny. It is pretty funny. I mean, she's got, I mean, she's got five years to uh, make this, make this perfect. So, (laughs) all right, well, let's get into this week's Real Talk. And like we said, we caught up with uh, Danielle Cabral, who is a newbie on The Real Housewives in New Jersey. Her brother has been in a big storyline, the feud between uh, she and her brother. So we had to get an update on where she stands with him right now. Take a look. Do you regret bringing it up at all? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. Because it, it really... It made me connect on a different level with Melissa and with Teresa and not in a bad way either. Like I, I really did not come at Melissa like it's the sister-in-law. I didn't do that with her. I respected what she said back to me and her feelings as much as I, you know, I'm very close with Teresa. 
I respected both of their stories because there are two sides to the story. Mm-hmm. You can you can call my brother up right now and he could tell you something completely different than what I'm saying, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean his truth is any less important than mine. Right. No. Has anything changed with your brother since the show aired or the two of you spoken at all? Unfortunately, no. Yeah. No. And, and, uh, and since the show, since we filmed the show, it's almost been about a year. Wow. And um, he's had a daughter in that year. So uh, that's been tough. Mm-hmm. Things like, you know, you, you don't, when you watch something on television, you don't associate the person and the emotions behind it. But like, I didn't see my niece in her Easter dress. Like these are the things that I live with every single day. Mm-hmm. It's a real thing for me. And um, it sucks. Yeah. It sucks. Are you hopeful that maybe things will change? I'm always hopeful. You yeah. always want to hope for that. But in the same sense, it's like you hold out hope. It breaks your heart even more. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, unfortunately, it's on a television show that we have to see it every single freaking week. But you, at some point, you just have to, like, not let it consume um, your every day. Holidays no. are big triggers for me. They are. Like this past holiday, I come from a very big Italian family. I mean, big. Yeah. And um, that doesn't exist anymore. So it's very difficult. Yeah. Were you hoping that maybe he would watch the show and see how you were coping with everything? And maybe that would kind of open the doors to communication? Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. Or somebody that that, you know, is friends with him or Mm -hmm. and friends with us connect and say, listen, your brother watches the show and you might have your differences, but he respects that, you know, you're, I didn't go, I didn't really go on and bash my brother and his wife. I didn't do that. Um, and, uh, I didn't get any of that. So I don't know what he thinks. I I don't think he's happy. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a comment on the show I made about if my son was to get married again and, um, you know, it wasn't necessarily towards my sister-in-law, kind of looked like it was, but it was really towards my son's future wife. Sure, yeah. <laughs> right? And um, that kind of took on a life of its own, and I'm sure that didn't make him happy. Yeah. Well, I hope I hope things change for you. I do. I hope so, too. <laughs> so, yeah, it seems like they are still very much estranged, and uh, it looks like it's going to probably stay that way for quite some time. Too bad. Yeah. Um, I thought maybe after the season started airing, you would reach out, but apparently yeah. not. No. no. Well, we also chatted with an OG reality star, Jen Bunny. You might remember mm-hmm. her from Laguna Beach. Um, she she was kind of like the villain at the time. And right. she revealed that she could have been a housewife. So take a look. Would you ever do like a like a real housewives if they ever like asked you to do something like that? There's been whisperings before um, through other people and... I, I don't, I don't think so. I got to tell you because reality TV these days is so unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And my husband, he's an orthopedic surgeon in the community. And he's got this like, you know, has to have a pristine reputation and you never know how they're going to twist things and what kind of drama they're going to throw you in. And so it, in my career too, like I'm a senior executive and I have a lot of heavy responsibility taking care of like hundreds of thousands of patients. And so I, I, I'm not sure I would want to take the risk of putting myself into a situation that I didn't have control over. Mm-hmm. Totally. I would love to see you though. It'd be so good. Do you think I feel like I'm not, I feel like I'm not a good TV person though. Really? Like I think I've shown that TV isn't my thing. <laughs> well, I you know? think it- I don't know. I don't know about that. But there was whispering. There was maybe some talks of you uh, kind of maybe maybe doing it. Maybe this was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there there were whisperings when they were looking for cast members. And at that point, I was really young. So I was probably too young. Um, but now and also for my kids yeah. and you always think having gone through it what if something goes south Mm -hmm. how am I going to deal with those repercussions Mm -hmm. for my children and then also these women get divorced on the show a lot and would it have happened anyway maybe or maybe they look for that to happen and that's why they pick certain cast members but geez that happens a lot and that does happen a lot it's like a 
Right. It's like a kiss of death on the marriage. Yeah. So if the most important right. thing to me in my life is my family and my marriage, I'm not sure that that would be a great decision. No, totally. I would have loved to see Jen Benny as a housewife. I would love to. I mean, she yeah. really is the OG from the OC. So, um, yeah. you know, who knows? Maybe in the future. And you know. Yeah. You never know. She seems like maybe a little hesitant, but I'm sure yeah. if they called and the money was right, she'd be there. I'd love to see like her, Heidi, mm -hmm. just all the hills as housewives, right. you know, yes. as housewives. The hills help. Done. Get Andy in the camera. <laughs> let's, let's go. <laughs> all right. Let's recap this week's episode of Jersey. Before we headed to Ireland, we had a little envy party with Danielle's bougie kids and you know, of course, uh, Danielle calling Rachel a rat. I'm, yeah. I think this is getting a little, I'm still confused as to why they're even fighting, really. I am too. I'm so like distracted by M Melissa and Teresa that mm. I'm, I, every week I'm like, wait, why are they fighting? Right. I need to yeah. rewind. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I don't remember what's really going on I here. Don't but, know. you know, in our interview with Danielle, she still maintains that, you know, she's a rat. So not, I guess. Yeah. They're, they're still on bad terms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, also on not great terms, Bill and Jen, they're yeah. still going to therapy, although they seem to be doing a bit better this week, um, which makes me think, was this all for the show? Or are they just like making this? My storyline is that we're going to therapy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Possibly. But, I kind of agree with you. They yeah. were, I mean, she's kind of, besides like her drama with like Margaret this season, mm -hmm. Jen wasn't really like, didn't have like a huge storyline as compared to last season when it was right. all about the affair and things like that. So, right. you know, maybe just trying to stay a little bit relevant, I guess. Um, yeah. This, so we go to Ireland and then Jen Fessler drops the greatest bombshell I've ever heard in my life. Like so the good. fact that she had a, a, Fair or like well hooked up with Jane yeah. Scandolfini, Tony Soprano, like multiple what? times, it so, sounds like multiple times. The one that got away, like her, she is hysterical. She's I can't hysterical. get over this. <laughs> I, I think she's a great addition to this cast, even if she too. is just a friend. Is she she's just a friend, right? She's just a friend, but, but I would not be mad if she was a full time housewife. No, I think that she's she great. Is hysterical. I mean, when she was like, he was inside me twice, or more than once, or I think she said, uh, <laughs> the one that got away, it's so good. <laughs> so good that was like my mind was blown yeah. that was so crazy and when they showed the old pictures of him i was like he looks pretty hot actually i, I mean if you it. go back and watch early sopranos like i get it like, <laughs> like you know <laughs> he had he had something yeah, um, that, yeah. that is absolutely amazing it really yeah. is yeah. um then jen kind of admitting that the coffee tea reader or the tea reader whatever that was was yeah. definitely like a fraud <laughs> uh yeah also many of you in the comments were mad at us because you said it's a very very real thing um it's a turkish tradition and i totally we respect that Sorry. however this particular psychic i don't know if it was for her and i think we that was proven right this week when right. basically jen said that she tipped her off <laughs> yes she definitely did she yeah. definitely tipped her off about her fight with margaret yeah i mean the endorsements thing that was just hysterical it really was i love that jen could admit it though and be like i couldn't right. believe she said endorsements <laughs> i was cringing <laughs> crazy it was so funny yeah um and then you know then we finally get this rumor we've heard about it we knew that this was coming that margaret's friend told margaret's former friend told jen and Teresa that melissa was caught making out with a guy in the back seat of a car i don't really believe this rumor but it is strange to me that like margaret knew about this for so long and has been sitting on this information and i wonder why and i asked danielle about it and she's like it's strange that melissa didn't really get mad at margaret about this because yeah. margaret has known about this for so long it, it's very strange to me it is a strange thing and i do kind of think that margaret has an arsenal on everyone now um, mm -hmm. where she kind of just keeps these like little fun facts yes. in her back pocket in case something mm -hmm. comes out that she needs it. Um, but yeah, I feel like someone needs to do some digging on Margaret, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, let's it's so true. I yeah. agree with you. I feel like somebody definitely needs to do some digging on, on Margaret and I don't know, but I mean, she did, Margaret did, you know, she wrote her book and there was a lot in there. So she kind of, but I don't know. I feel like, the, I feel like Margaret may get hers in an upcoming season, but yeah. cause I feel like it, it's, it may be time. I don't know. Something, yeah. something's not uh, adding up here, but Teresa seems to believe the rumor, but I know. Yeah. Jeez. I feel like we didn't get enough of this. Like I wanted more from this i'm sure we'll get it in next episode or the next one but um mm -hmm. yeah it kind of was like brought up and then forgotten about and i was like wait, right. a second. Totally. I need wait. 
and like, more this, is, here. this is a, a huge piece of yeah. information. I need more. Yeah. Um, and then Jen saying that Melissa was asked to the wedding through obligation. Like, oh my God, that's harsh. so uncomfortable. Harsh words. Harsh, Very harsh. words. I mean, kind of true. Kind of true. <laughs> but just one of those things you don't have to say out loud. Right. You're like, you never say that. Like, Teresa saying that she never throws Joe under the bus. I don't know if I believe that either. Yeah. I th- it's so hard for me in this situation. Like I'm still like so torn on like whose side I'm on and then all this. Like I don't believe that Teresa handled the whole wedding. I feel like she she should have had her sister in law in the wedding to begin yes. with. But mm-hmm. um, but I mean, who knows? The, clearly, they don't have any sort of relationships. Yeah. So I mean, she feels like she's closer with Dolores and Jen, which is still it's so uncomfortable to me that they're like talking about this and like yeah. Melissa's not in the wedding. It's so weird. It's so weird. I mean, I think at the end of the day, when I really think about it. I think I'm not on either side. I think that they both have such issues and there's deep history here that Mm -hmm. we'll never quite know every detail about like, you know, suddenly the pizza thing comes out and like, that's a huge huge point of this whole thing that we didn't know about for so long. So it's like, how can we make our decision on whose team we're on when we don't have all the facts? (laughs) So true. It's so true. I feel like we're just getting like little pieces here and there and hopefully all the puzzle pieces will come together because this finale is supposedly explosive. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. All right, let's get into our social spotlight of the week. Um, Well, who caught your attention on social media this week? Went to Andy Cohen this week. He shared a early morning um, fight he was having with his son, um, so relatable. It's so relatable. I have a toddler right now, okay. uh, as do you. And I just feel like this is so relatable. He's basically nego- trying to negotiate with a toddler on what he can watch and what he can't watch or how, how much of an episode he can watch. So take a look. One already. Do you understand? I told you that you could watch one, dude. I told you you could watch one. And how many did you watch? Two. So that was so nice of me. So then how is there a third in play? You know, two Mighty Expresses. You want three more? Yeah. I kind of feel like I'm negotiating with a terrorist right now. Because, like, I feel like the, you keep changing the game. You keep changing the game. You know, one Mighty Express is worth two Fireman Sams just lengthwise. I'm just saying. Does that make you feel better? Does that make you feel better? It should. It's just reasoning. I'm just reasoning with you. And he did say, he said, early morning negotiation, spoiler alert, I held firm. It's so hard. I mean, it's there so are days hard. I just put it frozen on repeat, you know? I, I feel you. I know. Everyone. I feel you. It's it's uh, it's Bluey in my household now. Everybody's obsessed with Bluey. And yeah. I just, um, sometimes you just have to give in. I don't like, I can't deal with it. I can't deal Wait. with the tears. We were on Winnie the Pooh and we still are very much on Winnie the Pooh. Um, So Frozen was like, you know, refreshing to have something. But now I'm like, can we go back to Pooh? (laughs) Please, for the love of God. I love it. (laughs) Um, Mine also went to Andy Cohen because there was a big Bravo announcement this week. um, BravoCon is heading to Las Vegas, November 3rd through the 5th. So book your tickets. Book your hotels. It is going to be a huge, um, a huge Bravo con. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be yeah. a huge extravaganza. I'm ready for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, will but, Tom uh, Sandoval go? Will Tom Sandoval go? Tom but I don't even know. If Tom Sandoval might be fired after that Howie Mandel interview. Oh, we'll no. get into that. Please watch our reality recap yes. this week. We will completely dissect that interview. <laughs> totally. All right. Well, that is it for this week's episode of Getting Real with the Housewives. Um, keep commenting, keep subscribing, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.